Hey neighbors, it's your friendly city council member at large, Sarah Keppel, back to talk with you again. Uh, recently at our Health and Human Services Committee meeting, uh, we heard from Cuyahoga County Board of Health Director Terry Allen um, about what's been going on uh, with the rise of COVID cases in our community and how we could be facing a shortage of healthcare workers due to that crisis. Um, that really made me concerned with the holidays coming up. And so I reached out to some of our neighbors who work in healthcare fields to see how they're doing and if there's anything that we could be better doing to support them. Hi, my name is Eddie Cosma. I'm a hospital pharmacist and Lakewood resident of now three years. Uh, I live on Lake Avenue. Right now, I urge you to continue to wear a mask, distance from others, and maintain as safe a situation as you possibly can going into the holiday season so that you can help us care for our patients. Hi, my name is Katie Corrigan. I'm a Lakewood resident and a Metro Health pediatrician. I encourage you all to stay home and stay small. Last week, our Metro Health COVID hotline diagnosed over 100 COVID cases every day, and most of the tests I ordered on our pediatric patients were positive. These patients were being exposed by family and friends. If you feel you have to see family and friends, then please take it outside and wear a mask. Hello, my name is Dr. Ursula Galway. I'm a Cleveland Clinic anesthesiologist, and I'm a resident of Lakewood, Ohio. We really need your help to try and curb this explosive surge that we've seen in COVID-19. Please stay at home. Please avoid large gatherings and social situations and please wear your mask. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amy Deso, and I am a pediatrician here in Lakewood. Uh, we have a private practice called Neighborhood Pediatrics. We are in the INA building, and I have lived in Lakewood for officially 20 years, and I have four kids who, two are still in the Lakewood City Schools, and two in college from home, and, uh, and I just want to wish you all a happy holiday season, and remind you to please continue to wear your mask, be safe, social distance, help us help you. Have a great one. So I, I'm uh, Ryan Radram. I'm a, a geriatric psychiatrist. I work at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, I just moved to Lakewood um, just this year. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here. And um, yeah, I, so I, I work with um, typically 60 years and older um, kind of focus on dementia, um, mood disorders, those kind of things. I just wanted to wish everyone a happy holiday and urge everyone to be diligent and protect your loved ones and protect healthcare workers. Um, we're in this together and we will we'll get through this together. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michelle Pechnik. I'm an occupational therapist at a nursing home and a Lakewood resident. Um, I urge you all to please wear your masks and socially distanced so you can protect my family, your family, the residents at my nursing home and their families. Have a good holiday. Are there things that you're being asked to do now that you feel like are <clears throat> unprecedented, unsustainable, and are there things the public could do to help lessen that burden on you in your field? Wear a mask is the number one thing that everybody can do. Um, I know that when COVID started, uh, there was a lot of discussion uh, around, you know, healthcare uh, workers being treated as heroes and other frontline workers being treated as heroes. And, you know, people were buying us food and all of that gratitude is very much appreciated. But what you can do now, you know, is if you're grateful or if you're not grateful, wear the mask because that is the number one thing that will help us. It will keep people out of the hospital. It will keep our beds open for coronavirus patients who need it and for other patients who need it who are maybe afraid of going to the hospital because they don't want to come anywhere near other people who might have the coronavirus. Well, I think uh, the Cleveland Clinic, I think, released um, uh, a stat that I think a, a thousand caregivers have, have come down with COVID and are not have to be at home ill and you know not only is that i mean poor, i mean you know these these caregivers have to come in every day to go to work and, and and save people's lives but you know their lives are now at risk too uh and and so i think um just to echo what 
what everyone else has been saying is, is that, I mean, not only protect yourself, but, you know, protecting others as well. I mean, we, we, you know, a lot of the health, most of the healthcare workers I know, we, we don't have the luxury of, of working from home. We have to, we have to go to the hospital. Um, it's kind of healthcare related, but my daughter works retail and um, I would like everybody to wear a mask because um, she says, you know, we all see it. People walk in with a mask under their nose or if my daughter doesn't hear them the first time, they pull their mask all the way down to talk to them. And obviously I'm worried about her life, but you know, it, this is how the virus works. If she gets it, she's asymptomatic. She gives it to me. I don't realize, even though I have all the PPE on, patients can still get it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna be the carrier that makes somebody's grandmother die or, you know, get very, very sick. So yeah, wear the yeah. mask. Now, the other thing, I mean, as a pediatrician, I'm constantly encouraging children to be, to, to, um, to be good role models, to um, activate positive peer pressure. And I really want to echo that to adults now, you know, you set the example, you wear the mask, you know, you have, you see friends, you hear friends who are doing things that probably aren't the safest things avoid that peer pressure. I mean, the same things we've been telling our children all along, we need to do as adults. And when you see, you know, plans being made, be the strong person and say, no, thank you. Be, be the bold one, be the good example, just like we teach our kids, same thing, same lessons we teach them, we need to take those upon ourselves now and, um, and set good examples and encourage safe practices and our friends and our family. The, the safer we are now, the better this is going to get, and if we don't take it seriously now, these are going to be some rough weeks and months, and um, we need to take it seriously and take that extra that extra sacrifice now is what we all need to do. The choice isn't <gasps> to sacrifice or not to sacrifice; it's who to sacrifice and how, and um, and what to sacrifice and when. So, sacrifice is going to be really <laughs> You know, we're going to need um, we're going to need people to either we can sacrifice seeing some loved ones right now, uh, but be safe, or when we override completely override our healthcare system, we're going to sacrifice people who can't get treatment who need it. We're going to sacrifice healthcare workers. We're going to sacrifice. Um, other people with other medical issues who potentially get postponed. Um, so the choice is not, do we sacrifice or not? It's what do we sacrifice when and who does it affect is kind of how I see it. I've heard some people um, say that what, they, what our goal really should be with coronavirus is because we're not gonna be able to control it to make sure that we get herd immunity. And I just wanna dispel that fiction because in order to get herd immunity for something like coronavirus, it's unknown exactly what percentage of people would have to have gotten and recovered from the coronavirus, but for other diseases, it's upwards of 80 to 90%. If we say that 60% of people need to get coronavirus for herd immunity, which is a really low ball estimate, we have had, I believe, 300,000 to 400,000 cases in Ohio, and there are 11.7 million people who live here, which means that there are about 11.3 million people in the state of Ohio who have not had coronavirus. We have about 10,000 cases a day. If we continue at this rate, it will take more than two years to get to the point where we reach herd immunity. So I'm very thankful that a vaccine is on the horizon. Um, but I want to make sure that people understand that um, just basically throwing your hands up in the air and saying that this is a problem that will take care of itself is not a feasible solution, unfortunately. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for all you do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll join me in all doing our part to help out our healthcare worker neighbors. Um, let's have a merry little Christmas, uh, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, winter solstice, um, celebration season. Stay safe at home, gather virtually. Let's all do our part to be part of the solution and have a happy holiday.